joke man the black church is a joke that's what I'm gonna title this the black church is a damn joke okay and a house of condemnation it's, it's a damn joke and, and the sad part is I'm gonna leave that laughs up there because when you go into the to the church it's, it's, no, it's not any serious business or, or serious game in there it's all laughs and jokes Okay, and you people think it's gonna be all right. But first and foremost, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at the Great Millstone, and greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the elect. Which these pastors, whether it be Creflo Dollar, whether it be T D Jakes, whether it be uh, Pastor Price in L A, whether it be Eddie Long, who's dead. What was his anointing? What was his protection? That dude weathered away and died. How come the Lord didn't bless him? Okay, what the scriptures say? Whoever perished being innocent in Job. All right? Un un unbelievable how much of a joke. Everywhere you turn and they bring up the black church, it's a damn joke. And it's not just the black church. It's all your churches. Because they ran the same way. All these churches are ran the same way. A bunch of theatrics. You heard, you heard the organ in the background. Doing all of that. That musical theatrics and, and the choir and all that. That's why you people show up. as a damn Sunday morning concert. Okay? Not taking serious. You're taking the, 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 the role of a prophet as a damn joke. Look, as I'm, as I'm just sitting here, scripture's just coming to mind. Okay, so let me um let me get the lesson moving. All right, this is Jeremiah, the eighth chapter. I'm gonna start start up at the eighth verse. It says, how how do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? How how is it that that the it's funny you go into these churches and the pastor says, you know that they're the, they're the priests. They say that they're the pastor. They're the deacon. They all of these roles of the church. And the people say, yeah, my pastor this, my God this, and my God that. And barely reading out the Bible. What's funny is I, I grew up in these churches. So I, I know what it is in there. A lot of times you come to these churches and what happens? They uh they turn to page, Psalm, the 23rd chapter. And before you can even get there, the pastor then read the, the, the short scripture and then moved on. To the point where you didn't even catch what he said. By the time you found the scripture, he, he already didn't close the book and moved on. You don't even remember what he said because he said it so he read it so fast, then he moved on. But this is how the, the job of a pastor or a preacher is supposed to be. Right? No, no, sir. Matter of fact, um, let me get this right quick and I'm gonna go back. This is right here. Scripture's sake, I'm just flowing in the spirit, right? I mean, I, I as I was uh watched this video, uh, uh, what's his name, Kev on stage, uh, vague prophets be like, and he's a comedian or whatever, telling these jokes. But the church is a damn joke. The church is a damn joke. You Jake's church is a joke. 
You're not edified and learning nothing to the point where when the real prophets are on the street, you don't take their words seriously either. Okay, anyway, Jeremiah, the third chapter, the 15 verse, it says, I will give you pastors according to mine heart, according to the mind of the Most High. Okay, Yahweh is his name. They ain't teaching you the name in these churches. They ain't teaching you the dietary laws. They ain't teaching you what sin is. You're not getting any edification out of these churches. Okay. Which shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. All right. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That is not what you get out of these churches. That is not what you get out of these churches. Okay, you get entertainment. You get to get dressed up once a week. And if you need more, you go more than that. <laughs> and you get a show. You get a music show. You get a motivational speaker at best. But what you don't get is any edification. And you people don't want edification. You don't want to know about the things that's coming. All right, because the real prophets go out on the street and talk to you themselves. They're, they're standing where they're convenient to you, where you can ask questions. I never forget when I first came to the truth, the brother said, we should go to a church and, you know, scatter out and sit down. And and, that, and as we're sitting there and the pastor reads something or say something, we raise our hand. And everybody in the room, all the brothers start laughing because we know that's not uh, something that can happen. <laughs> you can't raise your hand in the church. Who's supposed to answer a question? If you raise your hand in the church, ain't nobody going to call. Yes, sir, you in the back. In the pew, the third pew from the right. Well, you had a question? <laughs> it ain't about to happen. So how are we supposed to get fed with knowledge and wisdom and understanding? All right, so let me go back right quick. Uh, again, Jeremiah 8 and 8, it says, How do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo! Certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribe is in vain. The things that you guys are writing down, the things that you are saying are in vain. Empty things. Empty things. Okay. It says the wise men, men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. Because they don't have the understanding of the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, let alone the name, let alone the proper spirit to come in. And what wisdom is in them? Verse 11 For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Because that's the topic that everybody wants to hear. The topic everybody wants to hear is all about peace. People just want to hear the topic of peace, especially Jake, because Jake, Jake go to, to church to get motivated and to feel good because all week them curses was whooping your ass all week. And you just want to get a breath of, oh, let me get away from it. But you just tried to get away from it in the wicked sense at, at the club last night, committing adultery and whatever other things you're doing, showing your body off all kinds of other things, that energies. And demons and, and vibrations you putting into your body on Saturday night. Then you turn around Sunday and go to the church and think you're just going to be cleansed. But just, just stacking demons on top of demons. Different groups of demons on you. But on, on some of them same days, you walk past the men of the Lord. The true prophets that really prophesy of the things to come. That's really trying to feed that the Heavenly Father uh, called. And appointed to feed you with knowledge and wisdom. Okay, and give you understanding according to his his mind, his will, and you scoff. For all these things, the Lord shall not uh, repay. He not going. He, he not going to uh, send fury upon you people. He not going to plead with you. <laughs> all right. Let me go to um, Isaiah. Um. Isaiah 30, I'm going to start up around 9. It says, uh, it said that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. 
you will not hear the law of the Lord. What's the law of the Lord? This whole Bible, but particularly you won't hear the, the laws of Moses, the commandments. I mean, we can't keep them perfectly, but you people don't even try. You, When somebody bring up you, you shouldn't be doing this or you should be doing that, you people make excuse immediately. Make excuse. Oh, that, that was done away with. Oh, no. No, I, I believe my God tells me. Yeah, but what, what do you learn about your God? Because it ain't in the Bible. You're not learning about him in the Bible. You're learning about him the way that your mind tells you about it. To make what makes you and your flesh comfortable. That's what's going on. Okay? All right? And it's not about that. We, we wouldn't know nothing about the Most High if it wasn't for this word. Or Yahweh Shai. If it wasn't for this word. And all y'all that think that y'all know him. If you're not going according to the spirit that's within the book, and I'm not talking about the false interpretations, the theology in, in, in these seminary schools or whatever else will teach you. Jesus is all love. Yeah, so why did he whip the people in the temple? That was love? Because y'all talk about love being a nice thing. The Bible contradicts that. Or you contradict the Bible, shall I say, with that. Okay. The Bible speaks something different, something else. And it all matches up. Anyway, it says, uh, which say to the seers, those that, can, that have visions and that can see, you know, that having these prophetic dreams of, 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 of devastation and end times. You see these commercials out, like the Foot Locker commercial, the Week of Greatness commercial. It's, it's all out chaos. It's a zombie apocalypse. It's the uh, UFOs. All out chaos. All going on at once. Leviathan in the streets. All this was going on at once in the commercial. Then they had a, I just saw tonight, a Dunkin' Donut commercial. Zombie apocalypse outside. There's no, it's not, it's, these are just topics that people are gravitating to. People are having dreams that this stuff is going to come true. And somebody's out there understands that this is a, 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 a true narrative of the people now. Apocalyptic, uh, um, epic, uh, what's, well, how do you say it? Um, uh, um, catas catastrophic is the word I want. Catastrophic events that are coming. And people are dreaming about them. Okay? People are seeing these things and they're dreaming about it. And guess what? They're, they're talking about it all over the internet and they're reading and these, these companies are reading the internet and the comments in the, in, in the posts, watching the, 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 the videos and what do they see? They see the people are gravitating to this and they're making commercials about it. Cause people are, and people love them. People are clicking right in onto it. All right? So we'll say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. And when they talk about smooth things, matter of fact, let me go to the blue letter. Okay, we, we got the word um, here, which is uh, Strong's H2513. Kalakwa. 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 Kwa, you know. It says, um, come on now. Yes, it says portion, parcel, smooth part, smoothness, flattery. That's the word flattery. Let's let's Google that word, flattery. Okay. All right. Flattery definition. Excessive and insincere praise. This is the this is the definition of the church. Flattery is the definition of the black church. Excessive and insincere praise. Given especially to further one's own interest. And what is that interest? Money. Gain. Okay? Because they'll they'll say all these flattering words and then they'll pass that collection plate around. Every movie, which which way is up? Uh, lottery ticket, uh Vampire and Brooklyn. Every movie, um, um, I forgot the one with Ice Cube and Mike Epps. All, all of them. Every movie that you can think of showing the black church, it was Portrayed it as a joke. Um, uh, don't 
be a menace by drinking your juice in the hood. Every movie where there's a scene with a pastor and a church in it, in the black community, it's a damn joke. You people love to have it that way to the point where you go to the church and it's a joke in there. It's a damn joke when you're going to the real church. You open your Bible, you in church two hours, right? The Bible was open a minute, three minutes, at the most five minutes. I don't think I had my Bible open longer than five minutes ever in one, on, on one day in the church. If it was open five minutes, I continued to read on. And, and didn't get it. <laughs> the pastor's scriptures have been closed. He he quotes a bunch of half scriptures, not really telling you the Bible says. They don't tell you where he said it, just the Bible says this is it is, according to what he's talking about. But never break it down where you can follow along and you can truly get edified on anything, any other topics, you know, that, that really uh they're outside of motiv motivational and um and monetary. The, the topic in the church, you know, in the black community specifically, but it's the same in all these churches. It's that plantation Christianity. Okay? And it's you Hispanics is caught in it. You natives is caught in it. You Negroes is caught in it. Motivational speaking and prosperity. That's what you get out of the churches. It's a damn joke. All right? Flattery definition, excessive and insincere praise. And you call on a damn white Jesus anyway. Nobody takes nobody takes the church seriously like that. The people that take it serious are the ones that, that's caught up in the biggest jokes. And usually they be the worst demons out there. You catch them on a Wednesday and they are all out demon. You catch some of them, the younger crowd on a Saturday, they are damn demon. Catch them on a Monday, they're a damn demon. But they up there, creased up and clean on, on, on Sunday. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh, my God, he's so gracious. So happy. And then walk right out of there and go eat some greasy-ass smothered pork chops. Or some ham. Or some, some abomination. Go sit at the at a, a, a hometown buffet or somewhere. And go eat. And touching on every abominable meat in the name of Jesus. You people are a damn joke. And wonder why the Most High is sick of you people and will come down and kill you damn people, man. Thus said the Bible. Two-thirds is going to get destroyed of the nation of Israel. Uh, 144,000 to one-third is going to escape. They're going to repent and escape. Narrowly making it. Narrowly making it. Giving our all and going to narrowly make it. But the rest of you people, you're going to catch the worst death ever. In the history of the planet. Ever. Worse than Egypt. Worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Worse than the flood to Noah. Okay. Because it's a damn joke to you people. Okay. Flattery. Un unbelievable. Given especially to further one's own interest. Now I'm going to bring out a scripture. You tell me if this is a joke. Jeremiah 28 verse 8, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war, of evil and of pestilence. That's not a joke. Those things are not jokes. OK, of war, of evil and of pestilence. That's not a joke. All right. That is not a game. War, even in pet war, people die in war. Okay, evil, bad time, bad things happening. That's not a joke when you're in, a, in these shootouts that's, that's that's going on in in uh in the world. These uprisings, people getting killed, and all types of crazy stuff going. On, what's going on in, down in South America and Central America? It's not a game. That's bad time down there. Food shortages and, 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 and famines. It's not a joke. It's not a game. But you people in the black church telling jokes. Telling damn jokes. About the word of the Lord. <sighs> P 
pestilence. <laughs> it's not a joke. It says, verse 9, the prophet which prophesied the peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that, that the Lord Yahweh have truly sent him. Okay? And if it come, come not to pass, don't follow him. Okay? Um, I didn't really hit the scriptures out. I was lining up. Anyway, let me keep going, though. We got a, we're going to hit a bunch of them in Jeremiah, matter of fact. Go to the second chapter right quick. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 8. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they handled the law. And, excuse me. And they that handled the law knew me not. They ain't teaching you to, to, to don't eat pork. They're not teaching you to, uh, to study to show thyself approved. They want you to keep coming into the church. Every week, getting all filthy all week, so you feel guilty enough to pay the little change you get every week. Put the little change that you make on your check that you got left over from the week of wickedness and put it into the collection plate and keep collecting. It's just a, it's just a house to come collect. It just, it's, like a, it's like a tax house. They just come and just collect your money, collect the money that you give them. They'll come put your money in here. Unbelievable, man, how stupid you people are. Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, tells you how stupid you people are. And you continue reading in the book of Jeremiah. He said, man, I ain't going to lift up a cry nor a prayer for these people, man. I pray destruction onto these people because they don't want to hear you. And it didn't take him long to come to that conclusion, the prophet Jeremiah. Okay, it says, um... The pastors also transgressed, transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal, not of Yahweh, but by Baal, and walked after things that do not profit. That's what our people are. They walk after things that do not profit us. So busy, want to worry about what the next person wearing. It's all according to the flesh and not to the spirit. You don't know the spirit of the Heavenly Father. You can feel power in the room, but you don't know the spirit of the Heavenly Father. What does Yahweh Shai himself say? My sheep hear my voice and follow me. How do you hear his voice? Not by his personal voice, by the words. Who speaks the words of Yahweh by Hashem Shai? The prophets, the true prophets. We speak the word and you should hear the voice. That it's not our words, but it's the power in the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Go from there. Um, go to the fifth chapter, Jeremiah 5. Then I'll jump around the rest of the sword. I mean, I could do the whole lesson in this chapter about these false ass, wicked ass prophets, man. Um,. I'm going to jump up to the 20, 25th verse. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Yeah, you go in there asking for money. Matthew, the 6th chapter, say, um, um, I got to get it now. Now I got to get it. <clears throat> Matthew 6 and 19, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt. And that's what you people want. You people want treasures upon earth. Okay? Where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. How do you lay up for yourself treasures in heaven? Being in the spirit, uh, the, the works that you do. Keeping the law to the best of your ability. Prophesying, going out on the streets teaching. Okay? Feeding the flock of your how about Shimmy Shai. Okay? Wake doing your best to correct the people. Alright? That's how you wake up uh lay up treasures in heaven. Alright? It says, uh, where neither moth nor rust do uh do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There will your mind is going to be on. Your mind on your money, right? Oh, our money is spiritual money. This wisdom of your house me outside, that's where our mind is at. Where's yours at? What the things are you what things are you mining? Okay. 24 real quick. It said, No man can serve two masters. So you're not truly serving your Habashimi outside if your mind is on your money. If your mind is on, on fleshly desires and things. Okay? It says, uh, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the Most High in Mammon. And Mammon is, a, is the, the God of money. Okay? Can't serve both. So let me go back to Jeremiah. I was in uh, the fifth chapter, the 25th verse. It says, um, Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins uh, have withholding good things from you. Because you, you pray to things that profit not. You're praying for things that aren't going to benefit you. You should be praying for salvation, praying for wisdom. And it says, what well, knowledge and wisdom should be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure, and fear is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? You should be praying for that. More forgiveness, more, more, more fear, more humility, more wisdom. All right? It says, for among my people are found wicked men. They, they, and these are these pastors, man. That's why you can tell a joke, and they don't care because they know the people gonna flock into the into the church every week and keep the tradition and going of giving their money away. The five hundred one c three charter that's in them churches, they push that doctrine, which in that five hundred one they can't push the whole Bible. They get it's only a limited amount that they can teach about it. They can bring out of it. Okay. Certain certain narratives they can't bring out out of that Bible, whether they know it or not, they can't bring it out. All right, and then they can get away scot free with tax exemptions. Okay, it says for among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set a snares. They set a trap. They catch men. That the, the music and the organ and all that, and the drums and the, and the bass player and the music director and and that ah that pro, pro, I'm gonna play the video, the prophetic screams, man. Your legs have been hurting. That right, that prophetic scream, that's what you people show up for. That's what catches you. All them theatrics. All that bouncing around. The tones that you that they speak in. That's what catches you. And in and, and this comedian, which all the other ones do it as well. Okay? All the comedians that 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 that, that bring up this topic and you know, they do all this stuff because they know it's a damn joke. It's something you can learn. It's not a natural flowing thing. And it's taken as a damn joke. And you people take it serious. Oh, pastor was preaching hard today. He was preaching hard. What does that mean? He was out there putting energy. He's sweating and doing all this. And that. Well, okay, so what was the message? Oh, it was beautiful. What was the message though? Yeah, it was great. What was he talking about? What scriptures did he read? Yeah. People don't know nothing, man. It's a damn joke. Okay? The church is a damn joke. And the, and the Heavenly Father, it said, He that leadeth into a ditch, and you, them pastors are leading you people into a ditch, shall fall into a ditch. Okay? And he gonna lead the flock right into that same ditch. I forgot, I misquoted that. I'm sure I mangled it. But for real. It says, um, as a cage is full of birds. This is the church houses. 
like a, a, a bird cage, man, because you people get in this church and you get trapped. You see the women looking all good in the church, clean and hair all done up all Saturday, spending up their welfare money and, and their little checks or whatever they got money. Spending all that uh, to go to church every week, looking good and everything. Pastor say, I look good. And Dick is such and such. And brother such and such. And sister such and such. Forgetting what we really need. Not knowing nothing about what we truly need. What do we need? We need the grace, power, and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua and his wisdom. And you got to earn it. The pastors aren't telling you that. These churches are not telling you that because they don't know for themselves. They have no clue. All right. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit, lying. This big ass statue of white Jesus on the cross up there. That ain't what the scriptures talk about. It's a damn contradiction. You people don't care. It says, uh, therefore, then, then what's funny is how you know a, a slave minded nigga, and I'm a nigga, like I said, Hispanic nigga, white nigga, black nigga, what well, don't even matter. Skin color don't matter. But you damn Jakes, uh, the way you know that, 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 that you're full of SHIT is because when you say that white Jesus ain't what the, what the Lord looked like, why does that matter? That's the first thing you say, why does that matter? If it didn't matter, why they put that up there? Because it matters. And then, he, then you'll say something even stupider, like, he didn't have a color. He was olive colored. What color olives are you talking about? Show me these all Black olives? You just say olive colored. He was, he was olive colored. Who told you that? <laughs> and why are you repeating it like it's the truth? When the truth is written right in the scriptures. Everybody walked in the church holding the Bible. <laughs> or, well, you know, there's plenty of Bibles in the building, but nobody's reading them. It's a damn joke. You people are a joke, and you deserve death, man. That's what you deserve for your insincerity. Same thing the word flattery broke down to. That's an accurate description of what the Bible, uh, what these churches are truly about. All right? Um, therefore they are become great. They are waxing rich. Yeah. Cause you people are stupid. They you sit up there and pay your tithes to, to these churches. Get your 10. They, some of these churches want to know what your, your, uh, what, what, what your tax, um, ID numbers and all that. So they can look up and see if you're giving your proper 10%. <laughs> they are waxing fat. Yay. They shine. They overpass the deeds of the wicked. And they judge not the cause and cause the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. You ain't you ain't setting things in balance. You ain't edifying the people. You ain't telling them this is why, why bad things are happening to you. I had a dream. I prayed unto the Heavenly Father. The Urim and the Thurim gave me the answers. And You're not telling them what the, the full truth is in them churches. And, and the worst part of the people are just damn zombies themselves. We're going to talk about a zombie apocalypse. Look at the damn church. The church is a damn zombie apocalypse itself in there. How docile and, and done away with you people are. You walk out of here like you just went through a damn seance. Because that's what it's damn near uh, like. And I'm, I'm going to continue to use that word because it means condemned. When I use the word damn, means to condemn. It's condemned. You're going to be condemned for being in them places. All right? And the right... Of the needy, do they not judge? Shall I not visit for these things? Saith the Lord. And when he says visit, he don't come to play games. He come, he visits with fire, thunder, uh, wrath. Okay. He visits with those things. Terrors. Okay. It says, shall not my soul be avenged on a nation such as this? A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof when I show up 
to judge this place. When I send my son down to judge this place, what is the Heavenly Father going to do? The damn church is a joke, man. The church is a joke. I'm going to stop this video here. Lord willing, um, I got to clear out some of my phone or whatever to make more space to, to upload these. And I'm going I'm to hop back in it tomorrow, Lord willing, for a part two of this. I might even go live tomorrow and see what happens. So with that, giving all praise and glory to the Yahweh, Bashim, Yahshai, Bashim, Kakudash, the belongs to the apostles and the others at the Great Millstone. Abad out of Wam, man. Abad, because they, cause they're the ones, the, the Edomites are the ones, E, y'all the ones that, that put our people in this slave mentality. Okay, yeah, it was judgment of the Heavenly Father, but it was through your hands. And then our people love to have it that way. So Abad of Yum Yum now, Abad the two thirds. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Shalak, Rayam, all you people that don't believe in Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, in, in all truth and sincerity. With that, Shalom unto the elect.